Hi, and welcome to today's live reading from Step Brother by Stacy McWilliams, presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Chapter One, Bailey. Coming home from school on that Tuesday was like any other day of the week. I'd been to practice and I had tea at my grandma's like I'd done forever. When I arrived home at 8.30, at 8.30 p.m., my mom's car was in the driveway. It was unusual. She usually worked until nine at the office. I panicked because I usually did my breakfast dishes and my chores when I got home and I was scared that my mom would be mad at me. Mom, I called out as I walked in the front door. There were voices in the kitchen and I walked towards them. My mom was there with, her two, with two of her girlfriends. They were drinking wine and talking seriously. As I walked through the door, my mom and my aunt Kate smiled at me, but Kimberly ignored me. She'd hated me since her son had fallen out with me that year, the year before. Bailey, my mom smiled, motioned for me to come sit down with a grimace on her face. Open on the table was a letter. As I sat down, my name popped out. The letter was written by my dad's hand, and I reached over for it when Kim snatched it away from me. No, my mom said. Let her see it, Kim. She needs to know what her father has done. Kim passed me over the letter as I sat down at the island, surrounded by my breakfast dishes. My 11-year-old eyes went widened and I ran my finger through my blonde hair as I took in the letter. It wasn't addressed to me, but my mom. Henry, I know this might come out of the blue, but I can't have Bailey around anymore after last week. After last week, she was here and disappeared. We have two toddlers and can't have her acting this way, the way she is. It hasn't been an easy decision, but I feel it'd be best for Bailey, Josie, and Julian if Bailey stopped visiting. I will put the money into her for her into a trust fund that she can access at 25, but both Lexa and I think she is just reacting to the atmosphere between us. You've never forgiven me for falling for Lex and leaving you, Lewis and Bales. And then has passed, and this has passed to Bailey. She's never respected me, and I can't have her in my home with my children. I know doing this to her so soon after losing Lewis is going to be hard on her, but you need to get her some help. She isn't stable and needs therapy. Tell her how sorry I am that this arrangement hasn't worked out. I love her and she'll always be my oldest girl, but she needs more than I can give her. I'm truly sorry. Terry. My heart stopped and the tears stung my eyes. My dad had cut me out of his life. I looked at my mom and she shrugged at me. I raced from the kitchen and locked myself in the bedroom as I realized my dad didn't want me in his life anymore. I'd lost Lewis and now I'd lost my dad too. It hurt so bad and I spent the night sobbing and destroying the pictures of us together, cutting him out of the pictures of Lewis. My dad had walked out of my mom and me two years ago. He told me He'd always love me. I'd always be his baby girl, but he'd gone on to marry Alexa and she hated me. She made my life a misery anytime I went to visit. And last time I was there, she put me on the bus home, but didn't tell my dad. He went crazy looking for me. He didn't believe me when I told him she sent me home and this was the result of it. The next day, my mom called me into the kitchen. Bailey, come here, please. I walked into the kitchen at 7.30 and sat down at the counter, watching as she poured me OJ but pancake and put pancakes on my plate. My mom didn't do hugs or come over all lovey-dovey. She wasn't, she, was, she wasn't cool, just aloof, but I knew she loved me deep down. Bailey, I know your dad did hurt you, but it's okay. You'll be okay. She nodded at my plate and I began to eat my food in silence. I didn't want to talk about what my dad did. She sat down across from me with pursed lips and drank her coffee. As the clock hit 7.50, she dropped me off with Leah, our neighbor. The daughter of immigrants from Mexico, Leah was tall, caramel-skinned, and exotic. She was slim and, st and strict, but she wasn't mean, and I loved her. Morning, Bailey, she said she'd say every morning, and I'd smile and nod at her, before sitting by her window watching for the school bus with Alice, her six-year-old daughter. As the school bus arrived, we go down together, get on the bus since it was since it went by the elementary school before stopping at my school. I sat on the bus with her 
tuning everyone out and let her off at her first at her stop. This is how my this is how was how my life went until I was 15. Four years later, I arrived home from school and saw my mom was home. This was unusual and since the day my dad's letter arrived, I spent more time with Lee and Alice because my mom went to work early and worked until after I was in bed every night. Weekends, she went to conferences and during the holidays, the holidays, I spent time with my dad's parents. Though this got less and less and last summer, I only spent one week there. I was a good student and I worked hard at school. I wanted to go to university to become a doctor or an art history major. But I was only 15 and I had plenty of time to decide on my path in life. I didn't have many friends because I was shy, painfully so. Wendy, my best friend, put up with my paralyzing shyness and awkwardness around everyone. She was overtly funny and always cracked a joke whenever I froze up around new people to make me relax. She was especially good at helping me when the boys from school were mean or made fun of me. The boys at school asked me if I was a boy because I was as flat chested as I had been at nine. I hated the boys at school. I couldn't wait to be old enough to leave them behind when I went to university and became a valuable member of society. And they worked in fast, in fast food place. At least that was what I was hope, hoping for. As I walked into our apartment, something was different but I couldn't put my finger on what it was. My mom greeted me at the door of the foyer with a, with a hug, which had my back stiffening from the unusual act of affection. She pulled me into the living room where a strange man was standing. She had her brown hair swept up in an elegant chagon, fancier than she usually wore. And she had a gray silk dress on with navy blue heels. Well, hi, you must be Bailey. His smile was kind and he looked at my mom with genuine affection as she nodded at him. I'm Sean Christie, how do you do? He reached out his hand to me and glanced at my mom once before shaking his hand. He shook gently and smiled at me again. My blue eyes widened at the expensive watch. My dad had one like it. And before my mom and I lived in our apartment, my family lived in a huge house in the countryside with a pool but once my dad left, he sold the house and told my mom he'd buy us somewhere else to live. She told him no chance that she'd support Lewis and me without his help. So he told her that he put the alimony into a trust fund for me and that I could access it when I was 25. He also set up a college fund for me and added Lewis's college money when he passed to make sure I had enough to get through school. Lewis was my big brother. 16 when my mom and dad divorced, but he'd been killed after a car accident just after my mom and dad split. Since then, my mom had, cl had closed off. I shook my head and glanced around the door, wishing I could run to my room and close the door, but my mom caught my glance and shook her head. I knew I needed to tough it out. Come sit down, Bailey, my mom's voice commanded, and I dragged my feet over to the armchair while my mom and Sean took the sofa. Bailey, my mom said, Sean is my boyfriend, and he wanted to meet you. I nodded at her, not seeing the relevance of meeting him. She never made me made me meet any of her other boyfriends before. I always assumed she was dating, but she usually kept me out of the, that side of her life. Yeah, your mom has met my boys, and we felt it was time to meet her daughter. She talks so much about you and how smart you are. I smiled at him, trying to be polite, but I was struggling with him, with having him in my environment and didn't want to talk to him. He continues speaking, impervious to my nervousness. And since things are beginning to get serious with your mom and me, I wanted to get to know you a little. I found my voice and squeaked out, what do you want to know? It sounded rude and his back stiffened a little, but he continued to smile. I wasn't trying to be rude. I was trying to make an effort, but the look my mom gave me made me shrink back in the chair. Well, I'd, know, I'd like to know what you'd like to do with yourself after school. What interests you? He spoke softly to me as though I was a horse ready to bolt. I sat back and stared at him. He had brown hair with gray in it. His gray eyes were kind and his smile was, was wide, but I still couldn't relax. He was charging things. Cha he was changing things and I hated change. I've been through enough change since my dad left and Lewis had died. 
I had enough and didn't want anything to change in my life because I was sure that if things changed again, then I'd be completely and utterly alone. I'm not sure what I want to do after school yet, but I'd love to draw, read, and watch movies with my best friend. My mom made a gesture with her hand and stared at me for a moment, not understanding what she meant, and then I realized she wanted me to leave. I stood up and whispered, excuse me, before running from the room and heading straight to my room, locking the door behind me with my face burning with hurt and embarrassment. I heard my mom speaking to Sean. Sorry about that. She's shy. Shall we get going? Her tone was low and sultry and I cringed against the door. Will she be okay, Henrietta? He sounded worried and the fact that he used her full name made my stomach roll. He was serious about her. He said he had boys. God, what if they were snot-nosed brats and wanted, to hang and wanted to hang out with me? The thought left me cold all over because they would change everything and they would likely be the boys I knew, mean and callous no matter what age they were. As the front door closed, I grabbed my cell and called Wendy. She answered on the second ring. Yo, my biatch. Her usual, her, her usual greeting helped me relax and I glanced around my room taking in my posters, clothes on the floor, lemon walls, and purple bedding, where my bedding was still a mess from this morning. I walked over to my computer desk and pressed the button on my laptop. <clears throat> my mom's new boyfriend was here, I answered her without missing a beat, and she screamed in my ear response. What? Seriously, what is he like? Is he a fox? Your mom's a total babe, so he has to be a fox. Tell me everything. She was so excited, but my stomach dropped. I wanted someone to be as upset as me about my mom being serious about a man, but she was excited. But Wendy got excited about pretty much everything in life. He was nice and pleasant. He has sons, but I don't know how many. I wanted to run away as soon as I met him. You know what I'm like. Her side told me that she did know what I was like, but I continued speaking without interruption, which surprised me and told me that Wendy was distracted. I hate meeting new people. I hated it, and then my mom cut me off and made me feel like she didn't want me to get to know she didn't want him to get to know me. It was like I was irrelevant or something. I bet he pushed her into meeting me. With her eternally cheerful nature, red hair and pretty green eyes, she would have been one of the most popular girls in school. But because she wasn't slim, she was ridiculed. She ignored them completely, but sometimes I wondered if it hurt her. My mom's calling me for dinner. You okay, Bales? I need. I nodded at her question, then realized she couldn't see me, so I answered. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm going to do homework and then read that new book I bought yesterday. Okay, speak to you tomorrow. Love you. Bye. And with that, she was gone. I sat on the window seat and opened my Kindle, falling asleep there, crawling into bed early without eating. When I woke the next morning, I had a bagel, a cream cheese bagel and coffee for breakfast before going to get the school bus. I popped my earbuds in and listened to some music, ignoring everyone on the bus as we rolled along to school. School's as much fun as always. I was mostly ignored until it was time to take part in a debate. I hated being on the debate team and usually hid at the back, but my teacher was trying to force me to be more into a more focal role. The private school from the other side of town were, out, were our opponents that day, and I hated it when they came. They were rude, obnoxious, and entitled. Plus, with the private school, the bullies were out in force from, from them. As we took our seats, each person stood, stood to speak. My eyes wandered the room, and I couldn't help staring at this boy across from me. He had rich brown hair and a chiseled jaw, and when he smiled, it made my insides warm. He caught me looking at him, and I tried and failed to smile at him because he glared at me and I averted my eyes. He continued to glare at me throughout the debate with our school. We wore uniforms with a red tie and St. Marcus wore a green striped tie with black sweatshirts. Their school won the debate and still the boy from St. Marcus, St. Marcus's glared at me, making sure to barge into my heart, into my head as he, pa into me hard as he passed me by. As I turned to walk out of the dining hall where the debate had been held, one of the girls from my school sidled up to him and linked arms with him. Hi, Cooper. Why didn't you call me Sunday? His voice when he answered. Because I didn't want to. Sent a chill down my spine that had nothing to do with the words he spoke. 
His voice was rich and enticing, and I wanted something I never wanted before. I wanted him. I moved beyond them, and he stuck his foot out, almost sending me sprawling. I managed to keep myself upright, but grabbing a hold of Pete Thompson, the most popular boy in my school. He glared at me as I stood back up, mumbling an apology before taking off of the girls' locker room. The rest of my day passed without incident, but at the end of the day, Pete and his friends trapped me in the classroom and didn't let me out until the school bus left, meaning I had to walk the 12 miles home. I tried to call my mom and Leah on the way home, but my mom's call went to messages and Leah was held up in a meeting. She couldn't pick me up, so I walked. I made it home from school at 9 p.m. I was exhausted. My feet ached. My mom wasn't home as I let myself into the apartment. I glanced around and saw a silver car I didn't recognize parked at the end of my street. While I stared at the car, it revved its engine and reversed around the, cor the corner before taking off. I collapsed in my bed without dinner, thankful that it was a Saturday. Th it was Saturday the next day. My mom woke me up when she arrived at 12 and stared at her bleary-eyed, wondering why she was waving her hand in my face, until I saw it sitting there, mocking me. There was a rock the size of a small country on her finger. My mom was engaged.